I'm sure there's a lot of you who are really surprised to see me up here, and <laughs> I'm definitely surprised too. Um, there was one consistent thing in every single one of my evaluations, and that was that I was very quiet and I never spoke up in class. So I'm actually sure there are some of you who don't even know what my voice sounds like <laughs> until now. But uh, I am hoping that this will make up for that. Uh, <laughs> in past graduations, there have frequently been a lot of jokes about human ecology and what it means. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Um, I think we feel that we have to compensate for the tendency of everybody who hasn't majored in the subject to think of it as ambiguous and obscure. But I'm, I'm too shy to attempt a joke. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you're confused about what human ecology truly is, or if you simply really haven't thought about it, um, I ask you to look no further than our professors gathered right here. Um, none of them settled for the extensive knowledge of just their specific fields. They each realized the shortcomings of such a narrow viewpoint and sought to expand their own learning. I've taken classes with an expert of ceramics and oil paints, who's also a piano tuner, a carpenter, and a lover of music. I've taken classes with a professor of philosophy, whose extensive knowledge of Eastern thought is paralleled by his interest in the advancement of modern technology, whose fascination with sci-fi movies and quantum physics is equal to his knowledge of Tai Chi and Aristotle. I've taken classes with an anthropologist who can just as easily lecture about ethnographic studies as he can about farming, fishing, and woodworking, even owning a restaurant. I've taken classes with a film professor who is also an avid lover of literature, somebody who has dug into the finer points of James Joyce and helped me write everything from screenplays to novels to essays, even a speech. And this list is by no means exhaustive. Each of the professors have skills and interests that go above and beyond what they are required to teach. And they have all made a difference to every single one of us here today. For those who think that human ecology is ambiguous to the point of absurdity, or that it simply doesn't have a definition, need look no further than the closest professor. For while they are here to educate us in specific areas of study, they are also here as examples and as proof that human ecology is a way of living in and interacting with our world. As a result of their efforts and our hard work, I've seen a really incredible thing happen during my four years here. As we have taken the first steps towards being in our world as human ecologists, we have all, each in our own way, learned to speak. I've watched some of my classmates learn to speak in numbers, in equations, and the solidity of numerical proof. Others have learned the tongues of atoms and molecules, chemical compositions, biological makeups. For some, the most beautiful language can only be found in the intricacies of an ecosystem's balance, the give and take relationship of our natural world, the limitless borders of our universe. Still others have learned to speak in strokes of charcoal, pressing firmly and then gently to blur in the boundaries between black and white. Some in oils and watercolors, holding their breath as they mix the perfect shade of color, leaning in to hone the detail for hours. Some by pressing their fingers into clay and waiting for the perfect moment to release. I have heard those who have learned to speak through sound, using their hands to weave together notes and chords, rhythms and tones, using music to fill in the holes left by our language. However, our acquisitions of these new voices is not even what makes human ecology special. The amazing thing about what we do here is this, that even though we are speaking different languages, even though we see the world in different terms, we have still found a way to share our perspectives with one another. I might speak in terms of writing and art, and you may speak in numbers and facts, but we can still hold a conversation together. We can still understand each other because we understand the multifaceted nature of our world. It is up to each of us to make sense of the stories the world gives to us to the best of our abilities, but it doesn't mean anything if we can't share those stories with other people. To practice human ecology, is to strengthen that bond created by sharing, to forge the link of commonality that allows us to follow our, in, our individual paths beneath a shared sky. It's about knowing that even though we may be very different, even though our perspectives may be very different, we inside are not. It's about finding your voice while still being continuously open to learning and creating new vocabulary. We are all linguists in our own way. And that's really important to remember 
as we move forward into what comes next. After we leave here today, it would be easy for us to let human ecology simply lose its meaning. It might be the title in your diploma as it gathers dust on the wall. It might be entertaining to explain over drinks. And it might even be the punchline of an inside joke. But the point of human ecology isn't in the theory, it's in the practice in adopting what we have learned here into our lifestyles and everything that we do. Because human ecology is, ultimately, a way of being in our world. We can, each of us, give meaning to human ecology simply by remembering to communicate openly with other people, by striving to understand those who are different from us, just by being receptive. We can give meaning to this college and all who came before us by using our shared languages to continue translating all the stories of the people around us and the world we live in with intelligence and open minds, and by remembering that we should never take ourselves too seriously. And, most importantly, we can give meaning to our time here, to this moment and this day, by sharing with others what we have learned here, by always being mindful that all interactions are opportunities for both teaching and learning, and by helping others to broaden their own vocabularies of understanding. We must remember that we are never too young to teach and never too old to learn. We can strive to be living examples and living proof of that. As Kurt Vonnegut wrote, th think of it this way. Our aim is to make the world more beautiful than it was when we came into it. It can be done. You can do it. Thank you.